Welcome back to Workshop Friend and part two of making a machinist jack for my milling machine. Now if you're looking for part one you'll have to go back 12 weeks um, and that's because in between there was another series on making a radius turning tool and the reason for that is because I'm going to use that radius turning tool today in part two of making the machinist jack. So a quick recap of where we got to last video. We made these two spacers, a one inch spacer and a half inch spacer, and then a stackable base, and also the locking collar, which is knurled, and started to make the pad. Now this pad is to go on top of one of the screws, and uh, we'll have a ball joint. The next job is to make these two screws. The basic one has a radius pointed top, and the second one has a ball on the end there to engage with the pad. Of course that will be parted off. So what I'm going to do is to machine two blanks um, on the larger Colster student lathe because this is silver steel and it's a bit slow on my Myford lathe. So I'm going to cut out two blanks which I'll then take over to the Myford lathe for screw cutting and the rest of the operations. At this point I gave up on my insert tooling and reverted to the more usual for me high speed steel tooling. On reflection I should have stuck with a much higher feed rate. With those settings the metal removal rate was really good and the surface finish was good too. The remainder of the work I continue with my regular high speed steel tooling. Perhaps next time I will try the insert tooling again. And here I'm just forming a groove right up against the shoulder for the threading tool to run into. Yeah, I thought I would give this a go. I normally do fine work like this on my Myford lathe, but I think today I'll give it a go on the Colchester student. I've done a scratch pass there and uh, checked that we've got uh, 24 TPI, which we have. I've set my dials up, so we'll give this a go. I cut the 3 8 UNF thread to about 80% depth and then uh, finally cleaned it up to get the correct form with the die. So I completed these two blanks on the Colchester lathe. Uh, this one has a slightly longer section there 
for the ball joint which requires more material but otherwise the threaded sections are the same. Now I'm transferring this to the Miford lathe because um, I can more easily turn the ball on the end uh, but there's another reason for it which is here on the table that's because uh, I've got a problem with the well actually it's the pulley on the Colchester lathe so that's probably going to be another video at some point in the near future but returning to the job at hand I've made a little arbor in the Myford lathe and these can screw in and we can turn the other side but before I do that I need to complete the chamfer So this is the threaded arbor. I made a slight modification to the arbor, uh, relieve this area here so I can get in behind to measure the width of this feature. Now that should be 0.188, so we've got about 24,000 to come off that. And here I'm forming the 60 degree taper for the pointed screw. Well, there's a very small radius on the end here, 64 thou that's just over one and a half millimeters which really is small and I thought this would be an opportunity to use the recently made radius turning tool now there's a video up here um, if you'd like to see that it's a nine part series uh, this is the first time actually using it for real so we'll give this a go I made a start as you can probably see Okay, time to work on the other screw, the screw with the ball end. I've just tidied up this face here, there's a very slight burr there, so I've just dressed that.
Now I've ground up a tool to cut the groove which forms the inner side of the ball and the tool is just under 48 thou, 46 thou wide. I'm just going to touch off on that shoulder and then we need to come back 50 thou which brings it to there and then we need to plunge in a total of 88 thou which is um, about uh, two and a quarter millimeters and then come across another two thou to get the correct width okay we've got uh, some chatter there Okay, I've not uh, done anything to the tool, I've just slowed it right down and I'm just taking it easy, see how it goes. Yeah, that should be our slot. I'm going to start working on the ball now. That is um, too large. It's going to be taken down to 0.313. Uh, we've got 20 thou to take off that, but I'm not going to take it right down to the final size to give me a bit of latitude for using the ball turning feature to get the final diameter. So we'll take uh, 15 thou off that, and that will leave a touch for the ball turning tool to bring it to the correct diameter. Here I made a small error. Since I'd already cut the ball blank to the correct length, as I started to use the radius turning tool, I should have noticed that it was removing more material from the headstock end than the tailstock end. I could have adjusted things at this point by moving the saddle slightly, but I didn't, and it means that the ball is slightly further away from the shoulder than it should have been. Now it doesn't really matter, but it's something to watch out for in the future. Well, the slot hasn't come out perfectly. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit afterwards, like this. I think I missed recording that, but I've just put the chamfer on the other side the 30 degree chamfer and I did that by touching the corner and coming in a known amount on the cross slide just give this a quick polish we'll leave this on the arbor because we're going to need the Arbor for holding this on the dividing head on the mini machine for machining those flats.
careful not to make a mistake at this stage I'm using the same setup to position the two holes with the center drill on two faces The easiest way for me to drill this out is to bring it over to my drill and I put it into a V block. I can get this vertical with a square, which I've done, and then drill through those uh, center drilled holes and then open them up to one eighth of an inch. So at last we can remove the screw from the arbor. Apart from deburring, just uh, clean up these inner edges here. That's that screw finished. I'm going to heat treat it, uh, going to harden it out and temper it. So the other screw is similar. So once the two screws are finished, we can move on to the next stage. Well, that's all we have time for today. Part three of making the machinist jack will come out hopefully in two weeks time. That will be the final installment. And in that video, I shall be doing a little bit of elementary heat treatment on the two screws. And also um, trialing how to make a small bore joint. I'll uh, see how that goes. That will be a new experience for me. And uh, hopefully at the end of that, we should also just uh, evaluate this little tool and see what I could have done better. And maybe if you're making this, what you can incorporate in your build.